this world. Amen. Just want to welcome you if you are just now tuning in to Roku Television, uh, Periscope, YouTube, Facebook. God bless you. I have some things that the Lord has put on my heart just very, very quickly. So I always wait on the Lord. And uh, I had a lot of uh, errands that I had to run this morning. Hi, Deborah, Jennifer, Beverly, Christine, Randy, everybody. It's unbelievable, unbelievable. Okay, here we go. Let's get going. Talking about last day wisdom and how we are going to make it. Sharing with you my own experiences over my own life about many things that the Lord's put on my heart. It's going to be great. Be sure you share this. Like and subscribe if you're not a member right now. And hit the bell so you'll get every announcement. So I tried to put one up last night, but I really didn't know what God wanted to talk about until just maybe 20 minutes ago at the very most. And that's the way we depend on him. Amen. Because then I know it's totally of him. And if it's totally of him, that's fine. Then I'm in. Then I'm in. Amen. I love you. Let's get started. Okay, God bless you guys today. Hope you're doing good. Today is, what is this? Monday, May 13, 2019. And we're just going to move on forward with a lot of information that the Holy Spirit just put on me in about the last 20 minutes, like I said. And this is a testimony, actually, of the way the Holy Spirit many times moves with me that I'm feeling led to share with you today. Hopefully, it's going to help you. I have, I think, walked with the Lord for more years than, uh, you know, to me, it's been a long, long journey, a lot of years. And I want to say God bless you to Jackie on Facebook. Uh, Lord's put you on my heart. I'm praying for you. And also, Rhonda, I have been praying for you as well. Um, on Facebook and want to say God bless you to everybody, everybody that's in the house today. The Holy Spirit uh, has been speaking to my heart over the weekend about how impromptu, I mean, we have to be ready to go in a flash, in a flash. I think what triggered this was what the Holy Spirit said to me, what the Father said to me, Actually, the Father says that the Holy Spirit repeats what the, he hear the, hears the Father say. We know this. So to me, I talk to the Father all the time. I talk to Jesus. I talk to the Holy Spirit. I, I talk to them all because they are all part of my life. They are one, but they are also, in, in my way, I speak to each one because I, I have respect for each one of them. So uh, I was listening uh, to what the Lord told me uh when I was almost home the other day. And I thought, uh, why on Saturday? I said, why didn't you send me a dream? And he said, you know, as soon as I said that, as soon as I asked him that, right then, you see, it's the timing of the Holy Spirit. That's how you know when it's the Holy Spirit telling you something also is because of the timing. Well, as soon as I asked him that, and I thank you, God, for bringing this back to my memory and that I should talk about this for those that didn't maybe catch that video or know about that. Um, I was coming back and I just looked up right then, like years ago, I asked at the, oh, several things I could do. The Lord's just flooding me with memories right now. Uh, when we oddly heard a trumpet and Stephen witnessed of it in the other other room because uh, it was my birthday way back years ago. Just another short example I was feeling, I'm feeling led to share. I asked the Lord, I said, uh, well, this is my birthday, you know, and uh, you always uh, send me a confirmation or a dream or something special. 
And so the Lord was sending me many, many dreams about flying, about lifting me up. I might as well just say it because it, it is what it is. You know, those of you that are in the house understand you get it and, and you're okay with it because we are people of faith. So we walk by faith, not by sight. And God helps us to do what would seem naturally in the law of science impossible that we know it, but God, amen, but God. And I want to light, I feel like I'm a little dark. I just want to lighten my face up a teeny bit. I'm looking at myself. I feel like I'm really, uh oh, I got to lighten that up just a teeny bit there. There, a little bit better, it seems like. Okay, uh, years ago, years ago, the Lord was sending me many, many, three years solid. He sent me vision after vision after vision after vision, daytime, nighttime, all day long. I was getting visions of the Lord lifting me up. And I should go into that. I should just make some videos about the different visions that he gave me of that. Because that in itself was, I could do a whole video just on that. But I don't want to take a lot of time this morning. Basically... The point I wanted to, uh, I believe the Lord wanted me to share with you, is the fact that I waited all year for God to answer. All year. So many people today have no patience. They have no temperance. They couldn't wait one day, let alone all year. Are you kidding? And that's part of the problem with all of us. And I put myself in that basket, even though God has taught me patience over the years. Still, I want things now. I don't want to wait either. But we have no choice. If we're going to serve God, you have to submit yourself. Amen. We're not running this show. God is. God is running it or else we're running it and, and then he's just going to let you go run your own show and good luck Charlie because you're probably not going to do a very good job of your own life if you do it yourself and giving yourself credit as well. Okay, so anyway, uh, I had waited all year and the Lord, I said, well, Lord, this is, this is the day that you told me you were going to speak to me about this and I'm not going to even say what the prayer was because it's very personal, but it doesn't matter. I said, this is the day you were going to tell me, Father, if you're really actually going to do that. Because I didn't know. I was a young Christian. And so um, at that very moment, the wind of the Holy Spirit, someone is feeling that right now. Thank you, Lord. I have to stop and lift up the oil. I'm a very spontaneous person with the Lord. Whatever God says, I just stop. I just stop and I give God the glory. We thank you as you move now. Move now. Move now. Blow, blow, blow. Blow, blow, blow. Blow, blow, blow. Blow, blow, blow your wind on us. Thank you for your presence now, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I just had to acknowledge that because I can, I know, I know him. I know his personality. I know when he shows up and I know when he just like takes over and that's all we want anyway is for the Holy Spirit to take over. Amen. In fact, that's all I wanted to do a whole program of just God doing whatever he wants to do. Amen. For us personally, because Hey, I'm sitting here just like you. I'm sitting here just like you. And I, I love a word from the Lord. I always love a word from the Lord and I need it just like you need it. What we, we have to have the Lord communicating with us all the time, right? So anyway, that was the day that I said, Lord, you were telling me. And right at that instant when it came out of my mouth by myself, talking to the Lord in 19, what was it? 84, 85, 86, right in that year, in that year frame. I was sitting there and I just said one little prayer. It wasn't a long prayer, just one little quick prayer. Lord, this is the day. This is my birthday. This is when you said you were going to answer me. And right at that second, do you know what happened? The wind of the Holy Spirit physically came through the other bedroom. We were in a three bedroom home at that time, small house, thousand square feet. The window was open a teeny bit in my, uh, son's bedroom. No, I think it was our bedroom. That's right. So the wind was open and my husband was laying down, taking a nap in our bedroom on the other end of the house. And from that point, we, I, at that moment, I didn't know Stephen had heard it also because I just, I'll tell you what happened. So I just heard this wind heard with my ears wide open. Father, let them hear your wind with their 
ears wide open and their eyes show them let them hear it let them see it those were the days those were the days so here comes this wind and I heard it physically this wind of the Holy Spirit come in from that end of the house went right through the walls through the walls into the room I was in and went right out the window of the room I was in are you kidding this happened physically happened I was so blown away and right after that if that isn't enough if that would not be enough guess what happened then then I heard like this trumpet and you know we were living in a Spanish community and those uh, Spanish people had those horns on their cars you know and it, it was all different kinds of horns and I just was dumbfounded. I just thought, I heard this horn like, like I thought, that's Gabriel. That's got to be Gabriel. I knew it. You know how you know things. I just knew it was Gabriel. Nobody had to tell me. I knew it. And I said, that's Gabriel's horn. That's Gabriel. Somebody's getting that right now. Thank you, Jesus. I never know what God's going to do on these broadcasts. That's why you don't want to miss not one. You don't want to miss one. And I heard the trumpet and I said in my mind, that's Gabriel, that's Gabriel. And then, and I haven't even got to the notes today. I haven't even got to my notes. So I heard this trumpet and I heard it three times, three times. I heard the trumpet. I knew it was Gabriel. My daughter is laying on the bed trying to go to sleep for her nap. I'm sitting on her bed waiting for her to go to sleep, and I'm hearing all of this. And I just thought, oh, my God, I have to ask, am I the only one that heard this with my ears? I heard it. So I got up, and I walked into the hallway, and I knocked on the door a little bit. I said, Stephen, are you awake? Are you awake? And he said, yeah. I said, did you hear that? I think I said, did you hear that or did you hear anything? I didn't say what I heard because I didn't want to, you know what I'm saying? I didn't want to plant that in his mind. So I just said, did you hear it? Did you hear, did you hear anything? And he says, yeah, you mean the wind and the trumpet? Yeah, I heard that. He heard that. He witnessed of something I never said what I heard he said he heard it in the order that I heard it he heard it that's the real deal that's the real Holy Spirit that is the real witness of God Almighty in my life and that's just one example that's just the one God's taken me way back to talk about that I should talk about the the visions of God lifting me up all the different kinds of ones in the Catholic Church and all these different places I mean I, I wish I had enough time to tell you all of those it just blow you away because it just blew me away every single time God showed up it blew me away because God is not a Pete and repeat what he does is first original never but you see God is speaking to me this day as he was sharing with me last Saturday because every single year he's given me something huge on my birthday it's like God that's my present from God what a present right I look forward to it like what are you going to do next year Lord oh boy I can't wait I have no idea but I'm ready for it whatever it is and so I'm coming home the other day and nothing nothing I got nothing the whole day and I thought this is the first year and like how many years this has what's going on why is there something wrong with me and the Lord said to me so quickly, as I asked him, and I was coming home on the road, I'm all by myself in the car, and I asked him, I said, why, Lord? Why didn't you send me a dream or something on my birthday? Why? I've waited all day. Nothing. Why? And he said, because I'm coming. That's it. And right when he said that, right before he said that, I correct myself, right before he said that, it started to rain on my car. All of a sudden, all these drops of rain just started raining on my car and my windshield. And I looked, I thought, well, is it raining anyplace else? And I looked ahead of me. I looked to the neighbors over on that side of the street. Nothing. It was just on my car that it was raining. Is that not a prophetic sign to me, to you, hopefully? It blew me away. 
you know, this is how we know it's God because I had been driving home, nothing, no rain, all, all the whole time I was coming back. Right then it rained, right when I asked him. That's how you know God and it's nothing else because that's like, what are the odds of that? What are the odds? Let's just put it where it is. Either you believe at that point or you never believe. Or you will always be ridiculing and laughing and mocking and saying, oh, I'm the doubting Thomas. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Will you be saying that your whole life? If you finally just don't cross over and go, you know what? What are the odds of this? What are the odds that that would just happen in that sequence right at that exact moment? What are the odds? And repeat that year after year after year after year. We're talking from 1980, uh, midsummer of 83 is when all of this began with me. 1983. I've been living supernatural walk with the Lord all these years. But the thing he wants me to share with you today that's so very important is this. Because I was watching this guy, you know, last night I was watching a little bit of this guy. And then this morning it was like I got back. I had to run some errands this morning and drop a cat off to have a, a what do they call that, to spay the cat. So it's like, hey, life keeps going. But you know what? We keep going with God. We have our agenda with God. And so I'm uh, going through all of this, and I'm like, where am I I'm listening to this, Father, about all of that? Uh, the most common, what is this? The co most common, what is it? It was something about why people fail, why smart people fail. Well, smart people fail because, number one, they get full of themselves. They think they have arrived. And so many times the Holy Spirit is just going back away. Just going to back away and let you go on about yourself. Let you puff yourself up. You know, here's all of this. Hey, it's... No. You know, if I was to do it all over again, I would not use my name. I probably... I don't even, I don't even want to be on camera myself, but I am because God told me to. That's the only reason you're seeing my face is because God told me, you know do this because I'm going to do that. It's a partnership with God. Yes, God could come down and do everything himself, but God uses people. He uses you and I, and that is the encouragement also is to, you know, not be afraid to leap out into the water that you would normally sink in. And that is what he wanted me to tell you because over my life, I had not me, but Christ in me, with me, through me. I can do all things with Christ. Let's just start with that. I'm not saying I did it. I did it as God led me to with my own capability of my mind and God telling me do this and doing supernatural things to confirm it. That's how you know you're moving with God and you're hearing God. The picture of all the flowers is what he told me to put up about reinventing, 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 and spontaneous, spontaneous, and the variety of the way things God creates things, and that we need to get on board with God, and whatever he says, don't think with your brain, because if you do, you'll be too late, you'll miss it, you'll, you'll miss it. Don't think with your brain, just go with the Spirit. If God Almighty tells you something, and you know it's God, go with it. I don't care how ridiculous it sounds, how late you are, whatever, you're, you don't have any excuses. There are none. There are none. And one of the things that I wanted to share with you is this uh, salesperson that actually was a sales thing about, you know, smart people. Because I always love to get educated, you know. I love to study. I love to read. I love to find out. And that's the way that I have been an entrepreneur. God has had me be an entrepreneur doing so many things, so many things over the year, things that we didn't know a, a hill of beans about, but God taught us. Some things I went to school, some things God brought professionals and I learned one-on-one. -on -one. 
Some things God put on my heart. You know, hey, Susan, you, you know, after Stephen died, I could have just sat there and gave up and said, well, that's it. I'm, I'm done, Stephen. For 26 years, Stephen and I did ministry. And whoop, now I can't do this because he did that. What am I going to do? Oh, poor me. Oh, woe is me. No, get over yourself. Stop your pity party. And I decided, no, I think I'm going to be the devil's worst nightmare because what else better have I got to do with the rest of my days on this earth? I will just, I will just ruin his day if I can. What better thing to do than to bring souls in to the kingdom? Bring souls in. That's the, the biggest damage you can do. You could just bring in souls. He will not be happy if you do that. Okay. Number one. The thing that I learned over these years is to never think you have arrived, which took me to the book of wisdom. The book of wisdom. Proverbs. Proverbs. And so I'm going to bring that out a little bit. I just want to briefly touch on these notes about uh, ways that you can witness to people is what's your vision of life. Ask them if they have a vision. If you have one witness to somebody, this is just talking about witnessing. This is not talking about, you know, uh, anything else right now. The way that you can step out and just ask somebody, hey, are you having a good day today? How's everything going with you? Just something very conversational. You know, it doesn't have to fl f grow wings just talk to them. Hey, how are you doing? Are you, is everything okay? But be interested in them and stop being interested in what you're going to get out of it. Or if you're having a bad day, a good day, this is not about you. It's about them. Take an interest in somebody else. When the beginner's mindset goes disappears or disappears, you are really not smart when you think you have arrived, and in other words. Overpromise, under deliver. Are you making promises you can't keep because you think it's you can do it? Are you saying yes to too many people and delivering nothing? Are you fact driven? Are you driven by facts? and not by the spontaneous movement of the Holy Spirit, which is beyond all the realm of the physical. We need to move with the Holy Spirit in season and out, in season and out. Me mentally, do you think it's all you? Do you think that you're coming up with this great idea? Is it your mind? Is your mind centered in Christ? Entitlement. Do you think you're entitled to certain things just because you're a child of God? Things that are maybe not what you need, but yet because you've heard somebody preach and say, well, you know, yeah, finances. Oh, oh we all know God is going to meet our needs, not our greeds, but our needs. Wake up. Let's wake up. Let's all come back to the earth. Realize. Won't admit mistakes. Are you one of those people that you just refuse to admit ever any failures you have had? Are you that perfect? I'm not. I am far from perfect. But I'm trying every day with the Holy Spirit. Let me keep going down here to see what else I want to bring out with you guys. I'm not rushing this. I'm just taking because taking time because not getting your hands dirty. Fear of adapting is another one. You won't adapt. It's like you've, you're rigid. Well, we always sit in the same seat in church. We shouldn't sing these same songs. I'm going to witness the same way. I, I have to. In fact, I have a, a nothing wrong with having a little printout, you know, how to lead somebody to the Lord. No, no, nothing wrong with that. But do you have fear of adapting? Like if the Holy Spirit just said, hey, you know what? Just go right out there and just begin praying on somebody. Just give them a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom. Just give them something of hope. 
and you've never done that before. And it's like, I'm afraid, Lord. I'd, what if I? What if I'm wrong? Well, if you're wrong, then it wasn't you in the first place. I mean, then it is if you're, you know what I'm trying to say. It wasn't God in the first place. That's what I'm trying to say. Not getting your hands dirty. That is a big one. Stephen and I did so many th things over so many years. People would say to us, you're crazy. What are you doing that for? You know what? I have been a grip I'm for so many years. What's a grip? People, people don't even know what a grip is. A grip is somebody that picks up equipment, like for concerts, for musicians, for speakers, for... Do you know how many times I have done jobs that you would think if you were a professional, somebody else would be doing that? I have done many, many jobs. I've done many jobs. We need to remember whatever it calls for. Whatever the job calls for to get the assignment done that God has given you, you have to learn to adjust and it's okay to do something that you might think is a little below your job uh, description or whatever. We need to be people of the ground, of the earth. Here's some common wisdom statements. Wisdom can't be acquired simply through reading books. Knowledge is one thing. Wisdom is quite another. Something to think about. Wise people continue to doubt themselves and that's what's part of and that's part of what makes them wise. That's very big. So true. Wisdom is positively related to happiness because you will, whose mind is stayed on thee, whose mind is stayed on thee, you will be in perfect peace. Wisdom must be distinguished from mere cl uh, cleverness, which frequently poses as wisdom. Oh, that's very clever of you. You ever had somebody say that to you? <clears throat> you know what that does? That lifts up yourself, your physical, your your uh, you know your ego. You're not clever. Mm -hmm. You might think you are clever. Okay, uh, thank you. I got that note, Beverly. So we need to pray. Beverly says she's in the middle of a storm right now. In the name of Jesus, get away from Beverly's house, storm. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Get thee behind Beverly's house. You storm. Get away from her house. Amen. I believe it, Beverly. I believe it. Okay, let me see. Let me keep reading here. Wise people talk less, are silent more, and listen more than those lacking wisdom. You ever notice that? Very true. Wisdom is a function of, t that's like people, they have to get on the bandwagon of their media, their social media, and they have to say something that should never be said publicly about maybe their family or some situation that they're struggling with, whatever it is, and they get out there on a public platform and, oh, it all draws attention to them, whatever they're saying. Do you notice that? No, that needs to stop. We don't want to have that on our public forum, now do we? No. It actually stunts your emotional, spiritual growth. And it reveals what's really going on inside of you, actually. Wisdom is a function of time and experience, which are prerequisites to it. Let's read that again. Wisdom is a function of time and experience, which are prerequisites to it. Wisdom derives more from mis uh, wisdom derives more from mistakes and failures than from success. How many failures have I had? Oh, I have grown a lot over many years. I have I continue to do things that you know uh, people would say. Well, you need a whole team around you, Susan, to do that. Well, do I? What I cannot do, I will figure out how. I can have it done. 
at a very reasonable price or God will bring in a professional and they will donate their time. We will work together because of the bigger cause and they feel like they want to donate because they're giving to something in God's purpose. Amen. Wise people are also humble. There's really no such thing as someone who is both proud or arrogant and wise. There's no such thing as someone who is proud or arrogant. They can't be all of that and be wise also. They, you find people that talk about, you know, their accomplishments. So look at this, look at that. Now, if they're giving glory to God and it's a testimony and it's for a reason they're talking about that, that's one thing. But if they're just up there puffing themselves up, look what I got, look what, and they never give God the glory, then what are they doing? Wisdom at its quest breed kindness and compassion, which is all part of the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. We could just go into that. So I wanted to share that with you. Some little things that the Holy Spirit has really been putting on my heart that we need to be people because the of change and accessibility. When God wants to step in, in season, out of season, and say, okay, now, now, quickly, because here am I this morning. Don't you think I'm wondering to myself, well, Lord, what are we going to talk about? What are you going to talk? What? What? I would just like to know because I like to put it together ahead of time, have it all in order. I can't tell you how many times Stephen and I would go to ch uh, jail for nine years. We witnessed and ministered. God put us there. And we knew that was going to happen because he told me. <clears throat> and then the chaplains came and they saw us at a park which he told us to sing to also. And they said, we would like you to come and, and minister to the inmates. And I, I just knew, I already knew. I already knew. And I said, thank you. We would love to. I already knew that. I just didn't know how it was going to open up. But I know now. Would you know that guy, that chaplain that asked us to come and do that, did the flowers at our wedding years before? We had no idea of that. Can you believe how God is so perfect in everything he does? Everything. Everything. Amazing. Let me see if I can get to... Ah, uh, I think I did that. I wanted to bring forward this right here. I know that I have nothing. Look at this. Would you just... This is just a common Wikipedia. I know that I know nothing is a saying de derived from Plato's account of the Greek philosopher Socrates. It is also called the, what, what is that, Socratic paradox. The phrase is not one that Socrates himself is ever recorded as saying. This saying is also uh, connected or con, uh, conflicted with the answer to a question Socrates, according to Zephion or whoever that is and so on, this other person, according to Plato, is said to have posed to the Pythinia, the oracle of Delphi, Delphi, uh, in which the oracle, well, uh, anytime somebody uses the word oracle, we know where that's coming from, stated something to the effect, Socrates is the wisest. Oh, well, we know. We know who the wisest is, but it's interesting here. You know, the devil, you'd never want to have a conversation with the devil because look how cl clever could we say the devil is. He's saying, you see, the devil knows about wisdom because he was up there in, with God to begin with. He's the original one that got so full of himself, God kicked him and all of his, his one third of the angels out. So he knows very well about saying that he has arrived so he knows he knows because he was right by god so of course he comes out i know that i am not i know nothing he knows all about this that's why you never ever want to have a conversation with the devil because they are not 
uh, the devil is is a liar. Amen. The devil is a liar. Did I bring this up? I wanted to know the wisest quotes on wisdom. This is where I got that. This is psychology today. I'm not into psychology, but there are also always something that we can glean from different places, right? And that's where I got these little quotes right here. So you know, giving them credit, attribution, attribution. I think that's called from my days of ministry. Okay, I want to come back to you guys now. School from my days of college. Excuse me, I have to correct myself. I want to now find uh, Proverbs. A fool's anger is known at once, but a prudent man overlooks an insult. How many of us, someone has offended you, insulted you, and you just have to hold on to that thing, and you not only want to hold on to it, you want attention, sympathy from others, so we're going to tell everybody how somebody did you wrong. What's happening there? Number one, you're not getting healed from it. You haven't let that thing go. You're harboring that thing. And also, you're trying to drag in everybody to give you attention by putting that out there. We don't want to do that. We want to be more adult in our spiritual walk with the Lord than holding on to something ourselves, and also then bringing in the whole world to give us sympathy about that thing. What do you think the Father is looking at us when that happens? A fool vents all his anger, but a wise man holds it back. Ever notice politicians? Sometimes I sort of think that they're not so stupid after all, because they very rarely vent anger. Do you notice that? Lawyers are another uh, group of people. Lawyers hardly ever show anger also. Psychologists hardly ever show anger because they are letting you vent. If it's you that's sitting in the seat opposite them, they're letting whoever the client is vent. But they never vent anger. Something to think about. But yet we find in Proverbs 2911, Proverbs, I can't talk, Proverbs 14.34, Proverbs 14.32, the wicked man is thrown down by his own sin, but the righteous man has a refuge when he dies. There's just so much, so much that I just uh, wanted to share. I felt big time what the Lord was wanting to say, though, is that we need to just go with the flow of the Lord and allow the Lord to, in season, out of season, spontaneously move us, shape us, use us, and to be ready. Be always ready. Amen? Amen. It's like I went to get some uh, glasses, some frames, because my my other glasses were starting to get scratchy, you know. So I went to the store and I said, well, can you fix the l scratches on the lens? And the lady says, I'm sorry, we can't. You have to get new frames. So, okay, I got one frame that I was familiar with and then I usually get two because you save money if you buy two. So I got a second pair and I thought, well, Lord, I'd like sort of a transparent, like you see, I've got them on today. And I said, Lord, I'd sort of like something, but my eyebrows are like way high, so I don't really want them to be way down here. I want them to fit my face. And the Lord said to me, well, you're not going to find it in the women's section. Go to the men's section. I said, what? Go to the men's section? That doesn't make any sense. And he says, do what I say. So I did. I went to the men's section, out of the box, not where every everybody, all the women would be in the women's section finding all these because none of them were right. The Lord just said, get out of the women's section, go to the men's section. And you know what? I found this pair here and I thought, you know what? I sort of like that because it covers the area I want. But I would have never found it in the women's section. I had to go to the men's section. 
So that's just one little example of something that recently happened. I had to listen to the Lord because if I wouldn't have listened when he said go to the men's section, I would have never found what I was wanting that I felt like I, in my spirit, was being led towards that type of uh, uh, lens. So that's how we have to be. And I didn't want to, you know, I mean, sure, I get in God's face a lot and I say, are you kidding me? Uh, why this? Why that? Are you kidding me? Uh, so that's really what I had to share today. And I don't ever try to take up a lot of your time. I don't even know where are we, 39 minutes. Shall we pray? Shall we just find some time to pray? I'm going to put on a couple little, uh, what do they call these things? Segments here, I guess is what they call spots or segments about way that you can uh, keep in touch with the ministry. If you're led to nothing telling you to at all, please know that. I never do that. And I want to pray by the leading of the Holy Spirit for you right after these ways that you can uh, support the ministry if God leads you to and also uh, stay with uh, us on social media where you can find us on all the other different outlets and I will be right back and we will um, pray okay put down in the text what you would like prayer for what you're struggling with and we will pray for you amen Love you. Okay, I am back with you guys and I'm just reading over some of the comments here I want to there's a lot of comments thank you Jesus I want to start at the top and I'm gonna go down because I don't want to miss any of your comments that's important to me and we have just a few moments here so uh, God bless you Kathleen Miller thank you Jesus I want to uh, pray uh, for First of all, thank you, Margie says, happy birthday this past weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Um, we need to pray for Seema to tell the enemy to leave in Jesus' name. And Seema, I want to say, we will pray for you, but receive it. You are a huge part in the receiving of it because you can block it yourself. So don't let that happen to you because God loves you so much. We love you, but God loves you more. You know that. And um, don't let that happen to you. I, I gave an analogy, a picture the Lord gave me a while back on some other video about being a mother hen like and if you had babies and someone came up against your babies you would be like standing up and telling them get away and so you got to remember that um, the gift of salvation Jesus has given you protect it protect it because the enemy would love to come in and kill steal and destroy that gift so it's the gift I'm feeling led to tell you to protect 
as if you yourself were a mother hen. If that helps, I pray in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for Seema, and we just ask you to strengthen her mind. Give her the mind of Christ, Father, that all doubt go in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I'm just going to keep reading here to see if there's anything, and then I want to pray in the Spirit. So just forgive me for a moment. There's a lot of chatting, a lot of chatting, a lot of text messages. I want to, this is lifting me to his hand. Can you say what it means? I saw in my dream, yes, Susan, God was lifting me too in his hand. Can you see what it means? It means a lot of things, Seema. It could mean something personally for your life. It could mean he's lifting you up out of depression. Like I say, a personal application. It could be multiple applications also, not just one application. Remember, the Lord says, "When if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. So maybe at that point in your life, what was happening when you had that dream? Was your life life bad? Was it good? Was it challenging? What was going on? So it's a whole thing that that's why I uh, counseled for many, many years, one-on-one -on, -one, uh, on the telephone for people internationally, because there's a lot of questions to ask. When God sends you a dream, sometimes you'll know right away when you wake up in the presence of God in that dream, immediately, this was from God. And I'm sure you knew when you had this dream, because anybody that's had a dream from God usually knows this is from God. I mean, we're that, we, we can figure that much out. <laughs> we know it was from God, but then taking it to the next level and analyzing if God, you know, if it means more than just one application, was it something personal for your life? Was it a prophetic word for your life in the near future or the distant future? Now we believe, I believe that we are coming right upon the day that the Lord is coming and going to be catching us. Harpo Harposia, what if that word, I'm not great with words, but you know what I'm talking about. God's going to take us out, out. So there's not a lot of time for a lot of these prophetic visions and words and all of that to come to pass in my humble opinion before he comes. I believe a lot of the things that people were given dreams of will come to pass during the millennium when we come back. Because it's going to be a continuation. Remember that. <coughs> Excuse me. It's going to be a continuation. All those prophetic words. If somebody gave you a prophetic word and you're just like saying, I, I see nothing of that happening. Nothing. Well, I say this. I say you have eternity. Hello. So your life doesn't stop just because God is going to rapture us out. No, your life will continue. Amen. Otherwise, What's going on if we're not going to have eternity with Christ? Now, we're not just going to sit up there on a cloud and do nothing. No, <laughs> we're going to be doing something. And then we're going to be doing something for God. It says he's going to make us rulers. Uh, what is it? Rulers, kings, rulers over nations. Excuse me. And so I want to, there's a lot, a lot. I should do just a program and try to, take questions from you guys, but there, it could be a lot. So I'm not even hardly touching what I would like. I would ask a lot of questions. I'd look at your life the way it was when you got the dream. What was going on? How did you feel when you woke up in the dream? Not like we're supposed to be moved by emotions, but you will know spiritually if it was from the Lord or not. Amen. Let me keep going on down here. Okay. Amen. I have to witness again. Christine says, God saved my mom's life. She fell through a glass door and then it slit her throat. Hit no major arteries or nerves. That's a prayer. That's a testimony of prayer. We need to keep praying for Christine's mother. Complete the healing, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Uh, thank you, Brad says, Happy Mother's Day. Thank you, Brad. Uh, ten minutes ago in praying, and this is from Sherry. 
I was just outside not 10 minutes ago praying and the wind was so strong everywhere. We are having slight wind, but I could feel God all around. I almost fell asleep sitting the chair praying. You know, that's another thing, Sherry. I want to just say when you have uh, the presence of the Lord really strong and not just for Sherry, for myself as a testimony here, for any of you wondering why am I getting sleepy? And people may say, oh, that's the devil. He's trying to just put you asleep because he doesn't want you to read the word. Maybe God is allowing you to have that sedative from him, if you want to call it that. It's a bad word, but you know what I'm saying. Many times God will allow us just to have sweet sleep. That is scriptural because the devil doesn't have any... Uh, power over your life went through people started praying we did a broadcast God saved my mom's life amen let me keep moving down here changed and returned to the family my sister has been changed and returned to the family Christine says thank you Jesus keep doing it Lord keep doing it amen gonna keep moving on down here Oh, keep moving, keep moving and seeing. Praise the good revelation. Okay, glory to God. Amen, Christine. I'm just reading on. I want to, uh, we are at 50 minutes now. I don't see anything super urgent in the chat room, but I'm only halfway down. It, there's just so much. Beverly says, while Susan is talking about wind, there is a huge wind and rainstorm happening at my house. It's raining very hard and the wind is blowing. Well, we prayed that, Beverly. We prayed for that in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I'm going to scroll on down. I'm not don't have time to read all of these because there's way too many too many for me to give it you know a credible time and I don't want to blow through anything um let me keep going here praying for a job situation feel discouraged sometimes and direction for a decision Sabrina in Jesus name father we lift up Sabrina Sabrina, Father God, in the name of Jesus, give her what she needs to pay all of the bills that are coming to her, Father. Take care of all the bills supernaturally. Blow that money in from the east, the west, the south, the north. Let the angels bring in the finances. Let the angels <clears throat> usher in the door that you will open, Father God. Bring that door to her right now in Jesus' name. This day we pray and we agree in Jesus' name that you will help her, Father God. Help her, Father God, for the needs that she needs, that you will do it, Father, in Jesus' name. Now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just lift up everybody that has a need. Holy Spirit, Thank you, Father God, for greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world in the name. And you're by your stripes. Somebody's getting a physical. God is moving healing right now. Right now, God is healing, healing. So I have to I have to go with the flow of the Lord because I'm praying for finances, but God speaks to me healing, his healing, his healing wind, his healing wind is blowing in your room right now. It's just blowing. It's going and blowing, going and blowing, going and blowing. Why? What crazy words. Going in your room, blowing through your room. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Oh, but I say, sando sobro lo que te. Somebody needs to stand up and rebuke the devourer because you haven't done that. You're depending on others to do it. You're lazy. I hate to say the word slothful, but you are lazy and you're just like sitting there saying, oh, I'm waiting for God to do it. You get up, you rebuke that evil, unclean spirit in Jesus name. I'll say it with you. You just rebuke that devil out of your house in Jesus name. Say, I rebuke you all unclean spirits 
get out in Jesus Christ's name. In the name of Jesus Christ, get out. Get out. Get out. <laughs> I just heard him scream. I just, you know, it's so funny because God has such a sense of humor. He just lets lets us hear sometimes, you know that. He just lets me hear him scream. I just heard him go, ah! He <laughs> was just like, shh, 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 going everywhere. Get out <laughs> in the name of Jesus. I just heard him. I heard him. I, I heard him. Yeah, uh, some, but Kathy says, I feel the wind. I feel the wind. Hora da sebri mando sobre te. Gabriel, blow thy horn for us to hear this day. We pray and we agree today. Amen. Amen. I stand with you for every good thing. Every good thing. Do not despise the small beginnings. But know, am I am sure, know that I am surely about that which you have brought before me and you have placed at my feet. Oh, I look down and I see it and I'm lifting it up. I'm lifting it up and I'm blowing it back. Blessed and healed. You are blessed and you are healed. For I am the wind within the wind. I am the wheel within the wheel as Ezekiel as Ezekiel, I will bring you my direction faster than the chariots. You will fly. Fly. Did you get that? Wow. Wow. I just love it. I just, I just love it when God just takes over and he just says whatever he wants to say because I don't ever know what he's going to say. How do I know? How do I know? I'm just like you. I'm just sitting here. Yes, Lord. Wow, that's awesome. That is so cool. Thank you, Jesus. Rheumatoid arthritis. God is removing is the word. Removing. Removing. Rheumatoid. Rheumatoid arthritis. How do you say that? God's getting that out. That's checking out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, and I pray over everybody. April, 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 the wind of change, the wind of change in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, over April. For the daughter, Sandy's daughter, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. For Joe Mama, Joe Mama. I am cleansing the house, Joe Mama. I am cleansing the house. Thank you, Jesus. Sobre babache, sobre, 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 alert, alert, red alert. I am calling mine back and I am anointing others. And I am sending forth the wind of the Holy Spirit and it shall fall on you. It shall fall on where I shall send it. And I am sending it out across the land, the desert, the sea, the forest, the plains, the hillsides, the valleys. I send it forth with a mighty rushing wind. I send it forth. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Do not despise small beginnings. Somebody is s s uh, wondering, should I do this? Should I do this? Yes, you should is the answer. Yes, you should. Yes, you should. Pray for my heart change and my husband, Gigi. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Si no sobra leque. Ando sobra leque, sabado lotoba. I see a, I see a, 
you know how what are those things called they're like circular and it's when you take material and you take a picture and there's the little wooden rings and it's got a clasp I know because I had my kids do it when they were little like you all we all do those sewing projects anyway I'm seeing there's a beautiful picture of a home a house and it's got it's like one of those old-fashioned homes that's what I'm seeing over you Gigi and like the Lord is weaving weaving is that the right word stitching stitching I just see his hands and he's hand sewing it beautifully Wow and it's in I don't know what all that I've never seen that on anybody but whatever that is God is putting it back together he's re stitching it so that must mean that there are stitches that there are places where there should be stitches that are not there God is putting them back. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And also, it was like a flat surface before, and yet God brings it to life, the picture to life. That means your family to life, because there, it lost life. It lost a life. It lost a life. That could mean spiritually, the family needs prayer for spiritual coming back to the Lord and it could mean other things that I'm not even going to say thank you Jesus thank you Lord so we just thank you for Gigi's life thank you so much Lord God thank you cross stitch thank you Terry yes amen that's what it is needle knitting yeah that's just what I see you know embroidery hoop that's exactly right April thank you cross stitching yeah I just see the Lord himself holding the needle and he is doing it wow what a beautiful thing for the Lord to do that for our lives amen resurrection yes it did thank you Jesus we just thank you Father God thank you thank you Jesus thank you for Beverly's life Thank you for her family. Thank you for April in Jesus' name. For Deborah. For Sherry. Amen. For Sabrina. The Lord is faithful. Amen. We just thank you, Father. We are trusting you because you're the only one there is that is going to do this, Father. We're agreeing, but you are the one, Lord God, that makes a way where there seems no way. Yet I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I will make the crooked places straight, and I will shine the light in the darkness. And you will not listen to another voices, another one's voice, but you will follow my voice because you know my voice and I know yours wow thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Lord I better close it for today we are over on um, one hour but I love you send me your prayer requests we've been working all weekend on the new uh, server that uh, not server that we have but a new place to host the websites that um, we've moved it away from GoDaddy because they were like so expensive and and I just prayed and I said Lord you got to help us out here figure a way that a place that we can save money and so my son came in because we have to use wisdom always you just have to always have wisdom and be conservative in everything you do unless God moves you liberally I pray that this has been a something that has been edifying to you today you see, I had to reinvent, let the Lord reinvent the way that I was doing it one way. Can you imagine all those years of ministry, physically going to all those places, doing television, actual on the cable stations to the internet, and I'm sitting so simply here, and God says, but you're reaching more than you ever had before, but it's not in a con uh, conventional way that I would think years ago, oh, I'm going to reach so many people just by sitting in, are you kidding? But God is the final word, amen? So we have to not try to figure it all out with our brain, and whatever God says do, just do it, just do it. In Jesus' name, have a blessed day. I will see you guys manana. <laughs> I will see you tomorrow. 
and we will keep praying. Father, now bless us and bless everyone that's giving to this ministry. Father, I lift up all of the tithes, the offerings, everything, Father, the needs. Bless them back 1,000-fold in Jesus' name. Thank you for the faithful ones. Amen. I love you. It's going to be interesting to see what the Lord says tomorrow. Amen. Never know. We just don't know. It is his time, and I'm so thankful. He shows up. What if he didn't? Oh, my gosh. What would we be doing then? Talking about who knows what. Thank God. Our God does show up, and he is healing he is leading us, guiding us by the desires and burdens of our heart. In Jesus' name, have a wonderful day. I love you, and I will see you very soon. Thank you for your love.